Hi guys, I talk a lot about various interesting blockchain projects, but the assets of the most of the popular tools they feature is rarely covered in my videos. Today I'm going to tell you just about one of them, it's staking. First, let's recall such a thing as consensus in blockchain. A consensus algorithm helps users to coordinate actions in a distributed network. It ensures that everyone in the network agrees on the current state of the data, even if some nodes fail. In other words, consensus helps maintain system resilience. It's the basis for such a fundamental thing as mining and its newfangled alternative staking. The essence of staking is the storage of funds in a cryptocurrency wallet to maintain the security and activity of the network. Simply put, staking is the locking of cryptocurrency for reward. In most cases, a cryptocurrency wallet is all you need to add coins to staking. It's similar to a bank deposit, but with a bunch of cryptocurrency benefits. To better understand what staking is, you need to understand now how Proof-of-Stake works. Proof-of-Stake is a consensus mechanism that increases the energy efficiency of blockchains while maintaining a high degree of decentralization. At least it's supposed to do that. Let's explore what Proof-of-Stake is and how staking works. If you know how Bitcoin works, you are probably familiar with Proof of Work. It's a mechanism that gathers transactions into blocks and connects them together to create a blockchain. Miners complete to solve a complex mathematical puzzle for the right to add the next block to the blockchain. Proof of Work has proven to be a robust, decentralized consensus mechanism. But it also has one significant drawback – a large number of free-form calculations. And here comes proof of stake as a more efficient way to do this. Its basic idea is that participants can block their share of coins in the staking and at certain intervals the protocol will randomly give one of them the right to validate the next block. The probability of selecting a validator is proportional to the number of coins. The more coins blocked in the system, the higher the chances of getting that opportunity. So the choice of the participant who gets the right to create a block depends not on the speed of solving the problem, as in the case of proof of work, but on the number of coins in the staking. Producing blocks using staking provides a high degree of blockchain scalability. This is one of the reasons why Ethereum plans to switch from Proof-of-Work to Proof-of-Stake. Dan Larma has developed an alternative version of Proof-of-Stake, Delegated Proof-of-Stake. It allows users to exchange coins from their balance sheet for voting rights, with the number of votes proportional to the number of coins held. The Delegated Proof-of-Stake model can improve network performance by achieving consensus with fewer nodes performing validation. But the mechanism also leads to a lower degree of decentralization as the network relies on a small select group of validated nodes. Yes, that is, some privileged group will be able to boost a special influence on the staking process before mere crypto enthusiasts. So for now, let's go back to more democratic staking. While mining requires a significant investment in hardware, staking involves a different investment in the cryptocurrency itself. Instead of competing for the next block using processing power, proof-of-stake validators are chosen based on the number of coins blocked. Staking coins or share provides the motivation for validators to keep the network secure. If they fail to respect this condition, their funds may be at risk. This is where the saying no pain, no gain gets its opposite meaning. In practical terms, staking is simply the storage of funds in a special wallet which allows any user to perform various networking functions in exchange for rewards. The mechanism also offers an opportunity to add funds to the staking pool something we'll talk about a bit later, guys. 
most chains working on proof of stake have their own currency for staking. Some networks use a dual token system to split payouts as rewards, but every blockchain network can use a different way to calculate staking rewards. Some of the blockchains adjust the reward from block to block, taking into account many different factors. This include the number of validator coins, how long the validator share is in the staking, the total number of coins allocated to the staking, the inflation rate, and other factors. In some networks, validation fees are set as a fixed percentage. These rewards are distributed to validators as compensation for the inflation rate. Inflation encourages users to spend coins instead of depositing them in staking, which can increase the demand for them as cryptocurrency. Based on such a financial model, validators can then calculate exactly what reward they should expect to get from staking. Those of you guys who don't want to wait alone for rewards, you can join a staking pool. It's a group of coin owners who combine resources in order to be more likely to qualify for block validation and rewards. They pool their resources and share the reward in proportion to their contributions to the pool. Creating and maintaining a staking pool often takes a lot of time and expertise. They tend to be most effective in networks where the barrier to entry, both technical and financial, is relatively high. As a result, many pool providers charge a small commission on staking fees, which are distributed to participants. In addition, pools can provide participants with more flexibility. In solo staking, a share of coins must be locked for a certain period and usually has a withdrawal period. This is set by the protocol. The most common choice is to lock for 1, 3, 6 or 12 months. In addition, a minimum balance is required to add coins to a staking pool, which is a kind of security measure. Most staking pools offer their users a minimum amount to enter and do not have limit withdrawals. Let's introduce you to another type of staking. Here you need a hardware or software crypto wallet. Networks that support cold staking provide their users with the ability to receive rewards in the conditions of holding funds offline. And it's worth mentioning that if a stakeholder withdraws the coins from the wallet, they will cease to receive rewards. Cold staking is especially useful for large stakeholders who want to maximize the protection of their funds as well as keep the network running. That's all about staking for today, guys. Thanks for watching this part of the series. Leave your comments down below in the comment section. Share my videos with friends and family. Subscribe for more crypto content. And I'll see you in the next one.